They don't know. They don't, they don't know. They don't know. I'm a deadbeat cousin. I hate family reunions. You follow Bill Simmons podcast? No, no, I, I can't. It, it, he just, it, to me, he takes too long to get to. Like, I just, he, ah. As somebody who likes to ramble, like, I used to appreciate it, but now that I'm older, I don't have time for other people's rambling. I got to save it for my own rambling. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. I like, uh, I would never listen to, like, the random stuff he does, like, specific sports. But his general podcast, he has some good interviews. Just mo- it's mostly by the guests. Like, I listen by the guests. It's just, like, you know, he had Michael Rappaport on there. That's a good one. But, um... Okay. Yeah, man, actually be available, you know what I'm saying, to compete on the market. But just working so much. You can't say you... No, 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 no. No, no, let let me address this. Because when you said I was ducking the podcast, I was off for a week. I was not at home. My mom does not have cable, so I can't watch games. I'm not about to talk about stuff I didn't watch. We could have talked about other stuff, too. I mean, there's other topics. Well, but here's the other... I'm also not. About, I'm also not about to interrupt like my time off to to, to do something that I'm not getting paid for. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, and that's why that's why we're not competing on the market. You're not you're not even treating it like a job. But that's all I got. It. I, I hold. I hold. I have, I have two, and they pay me not much, but they pay. Me. I got two. They pay me. I. Right. Well, well, the the one the one thing I will I want to say. And this is the thing that before we either in the conversation or switch to another topic is that the most important thing about the analytics versus like the eye test argument that really that really needs to be hammered home this is this is why like i don't like the all-in philosophies that most of the franchises have employed is you have to do both you need both Especially on the highest level, you need to be and and like I I, I understand Wilbon's argument versus like you know hey if you go to a barber shop or talk with normal regular people you're not gonna have an advanced analytics argument or that's not gonna be a part of the discussion. I wish it were in my conversations depending on who I'm talking to it is but it doesn't necessarily have to be but it, I would prefer it because then you can tell someone's more. You could tell someone got more invested in the game than, you know, somebody who's just like, oh, well, I only saw this and this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Um, and, and it is part of the reason why I don't really do barbershop conversations and just like pick up random conversations with people out of the blue because I'm just like, I don't know what you think and I don't know if you have a brain in your head, so I'm not going to waste my time. But so I, I get that part of it. But like in terms of analytics and in, 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 in like front offices, I, I think he was making a really good larger point about analytics excluding minorities um, because, you know, you get people that went to MIT or Harvard or whatever and, and they run front offices and they run front offices with their within their network and people they know. And that happens to always, not always, but often be um, uh, upper crust white people who are really under who are into the numbers and understand the numbers case in point like i i don't think that uh, and, and go, to go back to what we were talking about earlier about steve kerr i don't know that steve kerr is coaching as well as people give him credit for i think that steve kerr is more so like letting the and putting players in the best position which in itself is somewhat coaching um but it's not like he's doing great adjustments in doing things that are that impressive and you know i don't know that mark jackson wouldn't have arrived at those same conclusions had he had that, those opportunities that's a good um, point I, I really still don't understand what the difference is or how things change but I was I guess I'm not there to know like maybe there's other levels like, well from what I've read it's basically just opening up the floor um, repositioning where they play guys and playing Draymond Green more so that you have a smaller lineup for more space on the floor because even though they don't shoot a lot of mid-range shots they get a lot of easier twos because there isn't there aren't as many situations where there's a big guy standing in the post clogging up the lane um, and that's a that's a that's a really simple adjustment, but it's also not simple because you know if it were that simple, a lot of people would have done it sooner. Um, other than Mike D'Antoni, but 
the, the thing the thing that I, I really want to hit on be, beyond the fact that yes, Wilbon was absolutely correct that numbers will be used to isolate and bring out the people that they want to bring into on um, those positions and it won't change the power structure is there needs to be a dual approach so like i like numbers but you'll never ever hear me say like you'll never have me have like an eye test argument where like numbers will rule number well numbers will play a role but they numbers will always play a role but they won't rule the day so like I, there, there, there are certain things like I've come to accept that you know Jason Kidd versus Gary Payton, who you think is better, is kind of one of those things like the style that you prefer and what type of point guard you want. But like if you tell me Tim Duncan or Kevin Garnett, and you say Kevin Garnett, I'm going to smack you in the face because you're a moron. And what? that's the thing that that's a, that's one of those things that analytics will help you get those extra margins. Like, what? and you have to have that approach that looks at both sides like you need to be able to say like objectively this guy is a great player or this is a great set of players and then also how do we maximize these numbers because if you do too much analytics you end up like the Houston Rockets you have a whole bunch of parts that should fit together and do really well like in terms of um, in terms of being able to score and being able to play defense but the sum of the parts doesn't equal what it should because they don't mesh and they don't have the they don't have like that objective like eye test fit and and they're not they haven't been scouted well in terms of can they play together or do they play well like if you just line up a whole bunch of numbers guys like it doesn't work like it you just it's just not gonna work but if you do great numbers and do great scouting and development and analysis like Putting all those things together is what's important. So that's why I have such a problem with the Wilbon way of thinking, because if you encourage people to think and just look at the eye test and just look at what they can see and visually, then you give people the opportunity to say, well, we're going to exclude you because you don't know about the game other than what you see. And you I refuse to see I that. I don't think I don't think he's I don't think he's encouraging it. I think he's just addressing it and speaking the truth. It is what it is, and it's similar to like you can even look at religion. Like certain people, like there's certain communities where it's just not a question, and there's others where it's a very real. So that's you know I, I wouldn't argue about that. But hold on, uh, you acting like Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett is such a split. I feel that way about Gary Payton and Jason Kidd. I feel like Jason Kidd, his career, like. Definitely, definitely had a better career than Gary Payton, like without question, in the way that Tim Duncan did. Over I, but it, that's the, that's that's one of those things where because neither of them won rings, it, I can't. I, to me, there, there's not that much of a differentiation. Jason Kidd won a ring. Jason Kidd won a ring, and Gary Payton won a ring, but they never won rings as like the guy. That's what I'm saying. Like it, Jason they, Kidd was more the guy. Yeah, no, Gary Payton was playing. I can't do that. But like, no, 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 no. Jason Kidd was more the, when when Jason Kidd won in Dallas, he was more the guy than um, than uh, Gary Payton winning in <laughs> in Miami. I won't disagree with that. Like, <laughs> I they're just, huh? They, they have very similar careers, actually. But, at but that, that and that's what I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I I I under, Like, I love Gary Payton. I'm gonna choose Gary Payton over over Jason Kidd. But I understand why that's a that's a that's a very split, debatable argument. Like, if you go look at if you like, usually whenever I look at top point guard lists, there it's one right after the other, um, or they're within a couple spots of each other with like somebody like Isaiah Thomas in the middle. Um, or not, not Isaiah Thomas. Um, uh, bu- 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 oh, uh, um, uh, oh, God, who is that? Old? I can't remember. I'm getting old. I'm getting old. I, you were right. Kyrie Irving was the uh, MVP of the All Star Game in 2014, and I'm old. Like I forget stuff like that. Um, really? Like it didn't happen. Um, but but I but I guess like that's one of those things. Like it it I I don't mind the eye test on something like that because that is your own personal preference and numbers aren't really going to tell you much difference. Their numbers are very similar with Gary Payton being a little more, a little better defensive with the defensive stats and, um, like, ah, I think for some years rebounding and Gary and, um, Jason Kidd obviously be being, being better on the assist, but not as much as you would think. Um, so yeah, like 
that, that that's one of those things where like I you know I I don't know but like Tim Duncan and, and Kevin Garnett like their numbers are also very similar but like with the eye test and then with the advanced analytics like you're just like wow like it it it's just one of those things where hey I'll take Tim Duncan every time mm, crazy well I understand I would take Tim Duncan the first uh maybe the first five, six years of their careers. But anyway. Why? Why? I mean, I, I mean Tim Duncan was in an incredible system early on, but he wasn't as dominant as Kevin Garnett, who was like, man, you don't remember KG, bro? No, I do. I do. But I think, again, that goes back to, that goes back to, as people call it, as I've heard it called this week, the arrogance of the eye. So we like the way that Kevin Garnett plays. We like the fact that he plays alone. We like the fact that he's more iso ball and like carry carry a team on his back. And like it took me until Tim Duncan's fifth or sixth year to really appreciate him as as great as he was. And it's like, well, this dude is killing. And then like by that point, it's like, oh yeah, it's better that he's taking easier shots and making easier shots and playing better defense and helping and being really good than somebody like Kevin Garnett who's like, I'm going to play the point guard. Well, that's not necessarily the best for your team, sir. You you might want to play your position and let, yes, it won't be as good as if you had your starting point guard, but it'll put you in better spots to do what you normally do and maybe give you a better chance in the series. And that's the thing that, that that's the thing that I, I just, I say that a lot. That's the thing. But that's, uh, that's something that has always like ha- that I've learned to address as I've gotten older with watching the NBA. Like some of it is a lot of what we like about the sport is aesthetics, and a lot of times the aesthetics match up with the actual talent and the results. But there is a point where they don't, and that's why you know you're, you're saying Kyrie is a great player, a greater player than he actually is. Because he aesthetically looks good, but at the end of the day, like, if you watch the way Steph Curry handles the ball and the things he does with the ball in terms of getting to the rim and making his teammates better, like, that's a better, that's a, I take that even if he's not as flashy or as, you know, as, um, talented with a handle as, as, uh, Kyrie Irving, because ultimately he's doing what he does for the team, or Kyrie Irving's doing it for his own bucket. So it's like, you learn, and I, I, maybe you'll get to that point. Like, and I'm not, I don't mean to say this condescendingly, like, you'll understand when you get older, but like, there's a point at which you stop paying attention to, like, don't, don't, and, and I, I would still read it if I had time, but the slam magazine, slam magazineification of basketball, and then you start paying attention to, like, the good, the good, like, hey, what makes somebody really good and why are they good and why we should, why should we appreciate something that isn't part of the zeitgeist or part of the, the pop culture or part of, like, what it, what it is that we made urban basketball versus, you know, team basketball and the, the way the game should be played. Hey, you know that, uh, Slam Magazine corroded my mind. My early age, so my whole uh, oh. my whole scope for for basketball is fucked up. But um, no, no, but that's the thing. And that do you follow Russ Bankston on Twitter? Yeah, I follow everybody. Well, well, no, he's the best because he. I don't, I don't know if you remember. Well, I'm sure you remember him as a writer. He was one of the better writers, and better storytellers. Um, he's he's great on Twitter, and he's like he's the exact opposite of like the Scoop Jackson, where you got the guy that like. It's like Stephen A. Smith versus Dan Levitard, which is why I write out for Dan Levitard all the time. Because like Dan Levitard never will be the guy that's like I don't appreciate like the way that the game, like I don't appreciate the fun parts of the game or the more counterculture parts of the game or whatever is happening. But he's like I also appreciate the sport for what it is. Whereas Stephen A. Smith, like he basically just follows the ba- the biggest narrative. And like we'll say like I, I, I can't, he he will like let's say Stephen A. Smith picks the Cavs. Stephen A. Smith will take it as a personal affront if the Cavs don't win. It'll be like LeBron James let me down, and that's like because he well, still that's his is job. More, that's his fan base. That's how they no 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 it's it's his job and his fan base, but it's also 
it's also how he approaches the sport. He doesn't approach the sport necessarily looking at it from the way that you should, like he, he takes the non-analytic street perspective, urban perspective. He rarely ever takes the, the he can take the informed perspective, but he rarely chooses to. And I think that, I wouldn't, call, I wouldn't call it, a, I wouldn't call it a street perspective though, because I mean, there's a lot of people who are informed who do the same thing, who use information to be just as biased. So I would call it more like he's a sensation because Skip Bayless is the exact same thing as him, but he—I don't think you would describe him as a street perspective. It's more like well, no, both, well, no, just well, both kind of silly and interesting. Like in different well, ways. Well, but see, that that kind of goes to my approach and the approach of certain people about certain things, which is a totally different podcast for a totally different day. Which I mean, is no, why no, I don't no, like, no, no, I think it transitions well. No, 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 because it, cause it's like, no, because it, it has more to do with, like, why you hear the term the black community and you don't hear the white community or the poor community or whatever, because, like, on some level, like, I look at those, like, you, when you're black, you have to, you understand, like, what you're, you should be understanding what you're doing. So, like, if you're black and you're attacking certain people or going after certain narratives or saying certain things, like, you should be very aware of what it is you're saying and not saying things in a vacuum. Because like, let's say you say, yeah, blue lives matter. Like you have to know that 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 is going to play a certain way with certain people. That doesn't necessarily make it right or wrong, but that means you have to know what you're saying. So like for me, with what Stephen A does a lot of times and, and how Will Bond wrote his column, I think he has to understand how he's saying is getting get received. And that's where it becomes, pro that's where what they do sometimes becomes problematic. They don't, they don't know, they don't know. They do a coup d'etat, man. I coup d'etat. We ain't coup d'etat. No, we ain't coup d'etat. International, national.